Okay, listen, I've tried to film this intro like five times and I've tried to make it clever and fun, but I'm not doing a very good job. So I'm just gonna get straight to the point, okay? Um, I saw Justice League for the first time a few weeks ago um, and it was really bad. Um, I knew it was gonna be bad, but I didn't know it was going to be as bad as it was. It wasn't even enjoyable bad. So I spent a little while thinking about why Justice League was so terrible because it had so much potential and why something like Infinity War or any other Marvel movie is so successful. And uh, there's a lot of components to it. There's the writing, there's the acting, um, but why wasn't it enjoyable? And I think I came to the conclusion that it has a lot to do with the villains. Um, in both these movies, you have these ultra powerful otherworldly beings who want to uh, take over or destroy the world or the universe. Um, but in the end, only one of them is actually successful in doing so. And one of those films did better than the other. Um, I'm of course talking about Steppenwolf from the November 2017 film Justice League and Thanos from the May 2018 film Infinity Wars. Uh, so today we're going to talk about these two villains who are super super similar and why one is super entertaining and exciting and engaging to watch and why the other one is the most forgettable villain in all of comic book history. Um, so anyways, welcome to my video essay on what makes a great supervillain featuring Steppenwolf and Thanos. Let's get right into it. So the first thing I think we need to talk about is motivation. And let's get this straight. Not every villain has to have an emotional backstory. They don't. Um, not every villain has to connect with us empathetically as an audience. Some of our all-time favorite comic book villains are just evil for no good reason. For example, the Joker and the Green Goblin have fairly unclear backstories, at least in the movies. We don't see the Joker's backstory or transformation in The Dark Knight, for example. Uh, he's just presented to us as a villain, but we love it. And the Green Goblin, Norm Norman Osborn's Green Goblin, is the result of an experiment gone wrong. There's nothing really powerfully emotionally motivated there. He just turns out to be evil and we love it. Watching this, neither villain really has a clear motivation as to why they are a villain, but that's not why we enjoy them. It's their terrible actions and the way they savor like all their heinous deed that makes them so deliciously fun to watch. It's the way they taunt our hero and savor their terrible actions that makes them so unbelievably entertaining to watch. We as an audience love to hate them. But with that in mind, I will say that some of the best villains, I think, are the ones that we can relate to. And if someone like Thanos or Steppenwolf are gonna destroy the world, they better have a good reason for doing so. So in the, in the category of motivation, I think that Thanos is the perfect balance of enjoyably evil and properly motivated. Um, early on, we learn that Thanos plans to wipe out half the universe in order to create a better and more well-balanced universe. Thanos has personally suffered the consequences of an uncontrolled population and he now feels that it's his duty to protect the rest of the world. And in many ways, he's right. His actions on Gamora's home planet have brought peace and prosperity. He has every reason to believe that what he's doing is right. We as an audience, of course, know it's not okay to just go around wiping out planets, but it's pretty easy to understand why Thanos is so diligently fighting for those Infinity Stones. At the same time, Thanos is enjoyably evil, even if he may not think he is. He single-handedly snaps the neck of a god, keeps a battle arena in his ship where he has his children fight to the death, and when he gets stabbed in the chest by an axe, he says, You should have gone for the head. That's pretty darn evil. Steppenwolf is neither enjoyably evil nor properly motivated. We hear through a lengthy expositional scene that Steppenwolf feels he has claim to the earth. Okay, um, and we know he has a race of zombie bugs who are out to do his bidding. Okay, um, we don't see him doing any cool action things or doing any cool fighting, but that's fine, I guess. 
We have no reason to care about Steppenwolf as a character. He's not very fun to watch. He's not enjoyably evil. He has no real good motivation besides that he feels like taking over the world, I guess. Um, and his dialogue is the worst thing I've ever heard in my entire life. So uh, that's it for motivation. I think another reason that Steppenwolf didn't really work as a villain is because we never really saw the great impact that his powers can have. We, we see him fighting various Justice League superheroes, but we know that even when those superheroes get hurt, they're going to get right back up and fight again because the movie's called Justice League. But why, but why should we be afraid of him as the audience? As the audience, we know that Justice League is going to win in the end, and the film doesn't really give us any stakes. In other superhero movies, we see the impact that a villain has on the world around them. There's something really big and powerful about seeing normal, everyday people run for cover as the villain attacks their city. It puts lives at stake. We know that the superheroes are going to make it out okay, but it's the lives of the civilians and the cities and the people around the superheroes that really set the stakes. In Infinity War, we're shown the impact of Thanos several times throughout the film. We see the deep impact he has on the characters and how he cares little for the lives of others. There are great stakes. Now think back to Justice League. Do we really see Steppenwolf's impact on the world? Are there really any stakes? Sure, he attacks a Russian village. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. He attacks a Russian village, uh, but we only ever see one family in that village. We only ever see the impact of Steppenwolf's wrath on one singular family living in a little house. Um, Superman does carry a building away, but we don't ever see faces or any people even in that building. So I guess we're just supposed to, I guess, think that that's a big deal. Um, in the end, Steppenwolf only slightly bruises the egos of our heroes and gets devoured by his minions at the end. And why should we care? Did the rest of the world know this was going on? Did Steppenwolf even have a negative impact on the rest of the world? Did, did he actually even hurt our characters? I thought Batman vs Superman was not a very good movie, but they did do a good job of showing the impact that heroes have on our world. They, they, it, the stakes felt very high in that film, and we had no sense of high stakes in Justice League. There was, n there was nothing to lose because there was nothing to begin with. Did Steppenwolf even have a negative impact on our heroes? I don't think so, and I think that makes him a pretty weak villain. Okay, part number three is the chemistry. Now this element is kind of a combination of impact and motivation. Um, what is the relationship dynamic between the heroes and the villains? Do they have chemistry? And I'm not talking about that kind of chemistry. No, I'm talking about is their back and forth fun to watch? I wanted to do this together. And I suppose you'll have to learn by spending the next thousand years as a battery. I see a suit of armor around the world. Ultra in the flesh. Or no, not yet. Not this Christmas. Do the heroes and villains have a significant impact on each other's lives? In the case of Thanos, I'd say yes. In a movie chocked full of superheroes, there still is time for some character development. The interactions between Thanos and Gamora were a long time coming, and they were really fascinating to watch. As Thanos and other villains interact with the Avengers, you can always feel tension. They do things that seriously anger one another. It's personal, it's painful, it's interesting to watch. We didn't get that with Steppenwolf. We know that he's a bad guy, and the characters know he's a bad guy, but there's not much else there. Noble Queen, why do you fight? After the unity, you will join my legion, and you will know the righteousness of power. So, in conclusion, I hope that this sloppily put together conversation video essay kind of thing gave you a better perspective on what makes a good villain and kind of what makes two villains with such identical backgrounds so different 
They're both infinitely powerful beings hellbent on taking over the world, but in the end, only one of those villains succeeds. Steppenwolf has the personality equivalent to a bowl of white rice. He's not enjoyable to watch. His interactions with the characters are lukewarm at best, and he lacks in motivation and chemistry. Thanos, on the other hand, is enjoyably evil. You understand where he's coming from and why he's doing what he's doing. You consistently see the impact and power he has and why he's a real threat. He's a force to be reckoned with. We see him humanized in a way as his relationship with Gamora is revealed over the course of the film. So in conclusion, DC, do better. Um, I really enjoy DC's different approach to the superhero genre. I think it's cool to take a, uh, a darker approach, but I don't think they're doing it right. And I really loved Wonder Woman, but let's be real, DC's track record has not been the best. And we know that a dark superhero movie can be made because the Dark Knight franchise was really successful. DC just hasn't seemed to hit on the right formula yet for a darker superhero film. I feel like a good villain can really make or break a movie. So next time you're watching a superhero movie, think of some of these things and think about how the villain impacts whether or not you enjoy the film. So anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this kind of nerdy stuff or enjoy hearing about pop culture and like movies and all that good stuff, then subscribe because I've got some more stuff coming your way. So <laughs> bye. Thank you.